Good day and welcome to Being Victorious. Today's juice is a kale, carrot, cucumber, ginger, and lemon juice. I think there's some carrots in there if I haven't said that before. Also, I'm drinking my kombucha, which is great. It's like uh, I usually wait until the end of my day. It's almost like a treat for me. So it's it's really good for you. It looks carbonated. So if you don't like to drink sodas but you miss the carbonation, kombucha is very good. Plus, it's a probiotic, so it's really good for your body. It gives you that bacteria that your body needs in order to digest things a lot better. So one day, maybe this will uh, be my sponsor. Do is I want to really talk about what being victorious means to me. So... When I started off on this journey, I had to think about some things about what do I need to do in order to be victorious? What are some actions that I need to do differently that create a victorious life for me? And I had to really think about it. But the one major, major, major thing that I needed to do was um, kind of go back on who inspires me. And in those inspirations come lots of revelations as to what you inspire to be and what you need to do. So one of my inspirations and has always been I, I, Audrey Lord. So I want to read something to you that um, I really, really feel close. And this is pretty much going to be almost like my reason for being victorious. So she has this passage, and I think it's in her book, um, Sister Outsider, but it's called, it, it's basically, this is what it says. I was going to die sooner or later, whether or not I had even spoken myself. My silences had not protected me. Your silences will not protect you. What are the words you do not yet have? What are the tyrannies you swallow day by day and attempt to make your own until you will sicken and die of them, still in silence? We have been socialized to respect fear more than our own need for language. I began to ask each time, what is the worst that, that could happen to me if I tell this truth? Unlike women in other countries, our breaking silence is unlikely to have us jailed, disappeared, or run off the road at night. Our speaking out will irritate some people, get us called bitchy or hypersensitive, and disrupt some dinner parties. And then our speaking will permit other women to speak until laws are changed and lives are saved and the world will alter forever. Next time, ask, what's the worst that will happen? Then push yourself a little further than you dare. Once you start to speak, people will yell at you. They will interrupt you put you down and suggest it's personal and the world won't end and the speaking will get easier and easier and you will find you have fallen in love with your own vision which you may have never realized you had you will lose some friends and lovers and realize you don't miss them and new ones will find you and cherish you and you will still flirt and paint your nails dress up and party because as I think Emma Goldman said if I can't dance, I don't want to be a part of your revolution. And at last, you will know with surprising certainty that the only one thing is more frightening than speaking your truth, and that is not speaking. So, using my voice, finding my voice, speaking, not living in silence, that is what being victorious means for me. You know, and people find it very odd, perplexing actually, when they find out that I don't speak up for myself. I'm a huge doormat in life when it comes to me. So being victorious for me is to no longer lay down when I'm not happy. Because what I do now is I go deep within. I become a silent punisher to others. If I don't like something, I don't say anything when it relates to me. I go along to get along, but all the all the time, I'm not happy. 
So in order for me to be, I have to speak. I have to use this voice of mine that people have said is so great. So I have to believe that I matter. I have to believe that I'll be understood. I have to believe my silence won't protect me. I'm not living a happy life in silence. I couldn't, and I've also, I've said this before, like I could really, I should go live as a nun and live in silence because that's the life that I'm living anyway. But I honestly think if I couldn't talk, <laughs> I definitely would be held on wheels. So a lot of times when people see me and they find me to be moody, it's because I don't have the words that I need in order to express myself. So expression for me is paramount in being victorious. If I can't express who I am, if I can't express my truth, if I can't express what's on my heart, if I can't express what's in my head, I'm not happy. I'm just not. But instead, I live this life right now not doing any of those things. I'm living a passive, aggressive life right now. I am not actively living. So my ultimate goal is to be victorious by using my voice because I already know through using my voice, everything else around me will gravitate and, and move towards me. My whole life will change because I will no longer live in silence. And that's not what I want. So what I want to do for all of you is... I want you to really think about this. Think about what, like we talked about this last time. What does being victorious mean to you? I was at commencement ceremonies um, this weekend, and one of the speakers said something that, that really, really, really told me it was time to make this next video. And one of the things that she said, not even one of the things, she said it several times, but she says, do it afraid. If that is not clarification to do it, to live, to speak, to do whatever it is that you want to do in a victorious manner, I don't know what else was. So I am challenging you today that by the time we talk again, I want you to, to do something, one thing, find one thing that you want to do that's going to, that you are afraid of. It could be baking a cake from scratch. Go get all the ingredients, bake it. But acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Say, okay, I'm afraid that this cake is going to be disgusting and nobody's going to eat it and I waste all my money. We waste our money on a whole bunch of other stuff besides the things that we bake in a cake that we've always wanted to bake. One failure only sets us up for a success later. So I really want you to take that in. Think about it. it. It doesn't have to be something big. I mean, baking a cake isn't big at all. It's baking a cake, you know. Um, it could be talking to somebody who you've always wanted to express what you felt about certain things. Go in and express it, but say it. Start off the conversation saying, you know, I've, I'm, I've been afraid to, to have this conversation. And you can even say why. Just, just do it. Do it afraid. Do it afraid. One, one other saying that I've heard was it said that, um, and it's about silence. It says that if you don't say anything when you die, when people are killing you and you don't say anything, people think you enjoyed it. I don't remember who said that, but it, it, it's true. So people, people will think that you are on board if you don't say a word. So do it. Do it afraid. Do it afraid. And for homework, besides that, I want you guys to look up Audre Lorde, and I want you to read her poem, A Litany for Survival. This is awesome. I, I really, really think it will speak to fear. It will speak to doing it afraid. So until the next time, I want you to be victorious. And don't forget, do it afraid.